Hi, I'm Harry McGee, political correspondent of the Irish Times. The big topic this week at Leinster House has been about, you guessed it, the budget and what's going to be in it and what's not going to be in it. Child benefit reared its ugly head. It has caused some embarrassment to the Labour Party. I'm here at the plinth of Leinster House to discuss this week's political events uh, with two of the younger crop of uh, Chuck Dola, Charlie McConnell, the Fianna Fáil TD for Donegal North East, and Kira Conway, the Labour Party TD for Waterford. Perhaps I'll start with you, uh, Kira. You've been in the Dáil now for eight or nine months. You've got over the initiation period. What's the reality like of being a government backbencher? Joe Higgins this morning described the Labour Party TDs as little elves. Is that a fair description? Well, I suppose what I would say is, I mean, it's unprecedented to find so such a majority of government backbenchers, and it is difficult, I think, sometimes to find your voice and to find your niche uh, because there's an awful lot of noise going on in front of you. Um, I think, you know, there are very difficult decisions that have to be made. And I, for one, during my campaign, um, over, you know, just there in February, over the, the three and a half weeks that I had to canvas, you know, I, I was very straight with people. I, I, I made, made it known in no uncertain terms that there were difficult decisions to be made. What I would say in relation to what the discussion that has happened over the last number of weeks is the fact that nothing has been decided. Um, and, you know, just yesterday I had some, I spoke with the Minister and again, um, I, uh, Minister Burton in, in relation to child, uh, child benefit, and I'm asking her to listen to what those organisations are saying, the Children's Rights Alliance and Bernardos, of whom I used to work for uh, before being elected, um, to, to listen to what they're saying and to take that on board before any final decisions are, are, are taken. No final decisions made, but it's a huge embarrassment to the Labour Party that child benefit is still on the table when your party leader, Eamon Gilmore, before the election, made it a precondition of the party entering government. Politically, it's seen as a U-turn, something that's extraordinarily embarrassing for your party. There's no difficulty. I mean, I have no difficulty in saying that it's a, it's a big issue for me um, and it's a big issue for for the Labour Party. I have no problem saying, but what I, what I will say and what I have impressed upon the Minister and the Taunashta today when I met him briefly is that, you know, how important an issue this is and that, it, you know, nothing is decided. Um, and, and that's all I can say at this, at this very juncture. I mean, we know that this week is a very busy week in Cabinet. I think there's three Cabinet meet, uh, meetings this week. So, you know, it's all to play for um, at the minute. But I do think that we need to have a grown-up conversation about child benefit. I think that in the past it's been lauded that it's been um, overly administrative or uh, the IT systems wouldn't allow us to tax it or to look at how we could target it at those who best need it. I think we need to take a long-term view of where we go with child benefit to ensure that the children who need it get it. OK, we'll, we'll come back to that perhaps in a, in a second or two. Charlie McConnell, you're a, a, also a backbench TD. Well, you're a frontbench TD because your party is so small that it doesn't have a backbench anymore. What's the reality like of being a TD with a party that is so enfeebled and so powerless in the face of such a big government as Fianna Fáil is? Well, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't agree that we're enfeebled and powerless. I think we're, we're making our voice heard very strongly as an opposition party and indeed as the leader of the opposition. Uh, absolutely, we lost uh, three quarters of our seats in the last election and that is an unprecedented position for Fianna Fáil to be in. But regardless of the size of your opposition party, when you're in opposition, uh, you're still in the minority. So whether you're a smaller minority or a larger minority, it's still the government that can push things through. And I think the danger really uh, that we can, we're seeing at the moment is that, that Fine Gael and Labour, because they have such a large majority, are being very flippant in many ways with many of the promises and commitments that they would have made eight months ago the general election campaign and indeed uh, I think because they feel they can afford to lose a few backbenchers and we've, we've already seen that or a few few members and we've already seen that with Willie, Rose, Willie Penrose last week resigning from cabinet and indeed uh, with Dennis Nocton uh, previously on the issue of Ross Common Hospital and really I mean with the, the approach of the government so far in re reneging on many of the commitments they made eight months ago at a time whenever they'd have been fully aware as to what the financial situation of the country was. I, I think we are quite possibly going to see more of that over the next two or three years. So what's the Fianna Fáil strategy in relation to this budget? It strikes me that there are two things that one must keep in mind with Fianna Fáil. Number one, you're responsible for the mess we're in. And secondly, the policies that the coalition are pursuing are policies that are in the programme that Fianna Fáil agreed and policies that Fianna Fáil may, might very well have pursued if it had still been in power. Well, Fianna, Fianna Fáil, absolutely, the, the new government very much has taken up and implemented the budget that was put, put in place last year by Fianna Fáil, and there's no doubt whatsoever that uh, we've been in government for the last uh, the last term and two terms before that, and therefore, uh, you know, commentators such as yourself and absolutely in the public, uh, if you look at the last election, very much laid the blame 
uh, at, our, at our door for the economic uh, situation. Like, we also know there are much wider contexts to that, where, and we see it every day unfolding in terms of the situation now with Spain, Italy, and indeed we've seen with Greece, etc. That, that's the wider context to it. But uh, the last election was fought, basically. I mean, Fianna Fáil went and produced a, a four-year plan before the last election as to what we would do uh, over the next four years and went to the public on that basis. At the same time that we went to the public on that basis and took a very bad electoral uh, defeat as because of it, uh, Fine Gael and Labour were going to the public making promises at, at, at making promises on, on issues such as uh, social welfare, that there'd be no cuts, income tax, that there'd be no increases, that ch child benefit was a, a red line issue, there's no way that it would be touched under them and indeed we see last week was a massive student demonstration, also that they would reverse the fees, um, indeed four days before the election campaign, Rory Quinn was put, you know, out signing a pledge with students that he would reverse it and there'd be no increases. We're seeing all of that now being reversed. As a former student union leader, Kira, that must have borne I mean, right home with you. And there's no doubt about it, and I think it's been widely lauded that you know the, 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 the policy first day was introduced by a Labour minister, by by uh, Neve Burnock, and it's one that's very close to a lot of Labour Party members. I mean, I, for one, am one of those people who was able to avail of the fact um, of, 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 um, of having free fees in third level. I mean, there's no doubt it's a very difficult... Um, uh, and I have, again, you know, and I think you've asked already what the role of the backbencher. I think the role of the backbencher is to, you know, to, to allow and to give the... and to, I suppose, put pressure on the minister to tell him what the issues are that are out there for people, because often we hear that ministers are, you know, somehow cocooned in their civil service world or whatever. And, and, and I would say... Um, and have, um, and I mean it's been reported in the papers, that I have come out and said that I would not um, support um, an increase in student, uh, or the reintroduction I should say of student fees um, but at the moment um, we're looking at maybe, um, I don't know, that, that there could be an increase in, in relation to the registration fees um, and that is a very difficult um, um, I think it's going to be very difficult for the Labour Party and it's going to be very difficult for the parents um, of, of students and I'm fully aware of that coming from uh, a home where there's two public sector workers um, you know, and I have four siblings in third level education, well three and another one on the way in hopefully um, it, I mean it's a very very difficult but as Charlie has said, um, I think you know it's a little bit flippant to say that, that, that we found ourselves in this mess because of the broader context of what was going on uh, worldwide economically. I mean, the fact of the matter is that that, that a midnight deal was done uh, with the banks that, and um, you know, there was a denial by Charlie's party that the you IMF don't have time in town. to go back. And, um, no, but I do think you know we put it in context in terms of where we are and how we got here. You know, we, but I think everybody know. was aware of it, and one of the difficulties that Labour might have politically is that they were fully aware of the situation and the reality that confronted. Them and might have overbid or oversold their promises because they were losing traction in the last week of the election campaign. And they, if what is a backbencher like you going to do if these things happen? If there is a if there is a reduction in child benefit and if registration fees are increased, or God forbid, if student fees are reintroduced, I mean, how are you going to sell that to your electorate? Would you have to uh, face a Willie Penrose moment in that situation? I mean, it's very hard to know, Harry, because we're, we're kind of speaking a little bit about the unknown. Um, I think what I will say in relation to child benefit is I want to see what other measures are going to be put in place that um, to ensure that the children um, who are... And we have, you know, t one in 16 children in Ireland living in persistent poverty. Um, and even through the Celtic Tiger years where Fianna Fáil uh, were in charge, we had the second highest rate of child poverty in Europe. I mean, that's a startling fact. Um, and so what I am saying is that I want to see what the ministers are going to do um, in relation to targeting that money and get an overall picture before I make my mind up on anything. But I, you know, I'm very aware. I'm out, um, you know, doing leaflet drops and canvassing at weekends and I'm meeting my electorate and people understand to a degree and, and, and I appreciate that. Um, and Waterford in particular is having a very difficult time um, at the minute in the southeast region um, and I spoke just yesterday with Mr. Bru uh, Minister Bruton um, about the job strategy and um, I'm very hopeful that we will have something this side of Christmas um, to announce to tackle those very serious and entrenched problems because it's been a neglected region for many years um, uh, before the Christmas break. OK, well, on that relatively positive note, thank you very much indeed, Kira Conway, and also indeed to Charlie McConnell. If you want to follow politics in the Irish Times on the website, all you have to do is uh, put in www.irishtimes.com forward slash politics.